This video will go through the enzyme graphs, going through key mark points needed for the describe questions and the explain questions. This graph asks you to describe the effect of temperature on the rate of an enzyme controlled reaction. The describe implies that you've got to tell the examiner what the graph is doing. You can see that the rate of reaction increases to an optimum or maximum rate and then it decreases. That's all you need to tell the examiner, but you won't get the mark unless you refer to the x-axis. So the rate increases between whichever temperatures to a maximum or optimum at a specific temperature and then it decreases between which temperatures. Make sure that the if the question asks you to refer to a specific range of temperatures, you only describe those because you won't get credit for describing any other parts of the graph. These are your key mark points. In an explain question, you've got to tell the examiner why the curve is that shape. So initially the rate of reaction is increasing. This is because there's more kinetic energy, there's more enzyme substrate collisions, more substrate is able to bind to the active site, therefore the rate of reaction is increasing, there's more product being made. As the temperature increases further though, the rate starts to decrease. This is because the high kinetic energy causes hydrogen bonds to break. This changes the shape of the tertiary structure of the protein. If it changes the shape of the active site, it's no longer complementary to the substrate. The substrate can't bind, so there's fewer enzyme substrate complexes. The enzyme has been denatured. These are the key mark points for this question. Explain the effect of temperature on the rate of an enzyme controlled reaction. This graph shows the effect of pH on the rate of an enzyme controlled reaction. Again, if the question asks you to describe, you are describing the shape of the graph. The graph, as you can see, shows the rate increasing, then decreasing. Refer to the optimum rate of reaction and state the pH. Remember to refer to the x-axis. To explain the effect of pH on the rate of reaction, you have to tell the examiner why the rate decreases as you move away from the optimum. Here, you've got to explain in terms of enzyme substrate complexes forming. If you change the pH, you change the concentration of hydrogen ions, and hydrogen ions will interfere with hydrogen and ionic bonds in the tertiary structure. This could change the shape of the active site, so it's no longer complementary to the substrate. So fewer enzyme substrate complexes can be formed. These are the key mark points that you need to know. Describe the effect of substrate concentration on the rate of reaction. Same rules as before. Tell the examiner about the shape of the curve. Remember to refer to the x-axis. So rate increases between whichever substrate concentrations you read from the x-axis and then it levels off. This is the maximum rate of reaction. Again, refer to the concentration at which it levels off. These are the key mark points you need to know. Now you need to explain what's happening. Initially, the rate is increasing as the enzyme is in excess. There's lots of active sites available. So if you add more substrate, the active sites just get more full and the rate of reaction increases. The graph then levels off because the enzyme then becomes limiting. All the active sites are full, so adding more substrate won't increase the rate because there's no more active sites available for the substrate to bind to. The active sites are all full, the enzyme is fully saturated, the graph levels off. These are the key mark points. This graph asks you to describe the effect of a competitive inhibitor on the rate of the reaction. You can see that the competitive inhibitor decreases the rate of reaction at a given substrate concentration. 
However, if you continue to add more substrate, so the substrate concentration is increasing, eventually the rate of reaction reaches the same rate as a reaction with no inhibitor in it. It will reach Vmax. Explaining the effect of a competitive inhibitor, you're telling the examiner why. First of all, the rate decreases because the competitive inhibitor has a similar shape to the substrate. It has a complementary shape to the active site, so it is also able to bind to the active site. This means that fewer um, active sites are available for the substrate to bind, or fewer enzyme substrate complexes can be formed. However, the rate increases as you add more substrate, this is because the substrate is now in excess, so there is a greater chance of collisions between enzyme and substrate rather than between enzyme and inhibitor. So the rate will increase, eventually reaching the maximum rate or Vmax. These are your key mark points. Describe the effect of a non-competitive inhibitor on the rate of reaction. You can see that if you add a non-competitive inhibitor to an enzyme-controlled reaction, initially, as you increase the substrate concentration, there is a slight increase in the rate of reaction, but the presence of the non-competitive inhibitor means it levels off at a lower maximum rate than um, in the absence of the inhibitor. Explaining the effect of a non-competitive inhibitor on the rate of the reaction um, you need to tell the examiner that the non-competitive inhibitor is a molecule or substance that binds to the enzyme but away from the active site. When it binds to the enzyme, it changes the shape of the active site. This means that the substrate is not able to bind to the active site. Effectively, there are fewer active sites available for the substrate to bind so the maximum rate of reaction, or Vmax, cannot be reached. These are your key mark points. This is a practice question that you can have a go at, just to check you understand the difference between describe and explain.